this is a graphic organizer. It's supposed to work with the Keystone exam. I adapted it from two main sources. The first source is Anne Lamont. She has a story writing graphic organizer, uh, A, B, D, C, E, action, background, development, climax, end. Mine's called A, B, C, C, E. And that's where I want to start. The first thing I want to talk about that makes this a good graphic organizer is the mnemonic and how usable it is for students. So that stands for acknowledge, build, cite evidence, and analyze, cite and analyze, and end. The second piece I love about this graphic organizer comes from a book called Core 6. There's a bunch of authors. They talk about how to achieve the common core standards. They offer this graphic organizer called a 3x3. Three three. This adapts that. There are three um, columns, and then there are three rows. Students can easily draw one of these. At the beginning of the keystone, for example, they'll get a piece of scrap paper and they can draw this graphic organizer very easily. Why would you draw this instead of a concept map? I think it highlights the importance of each different aspect that they need to include in their constructed response. Here's a quick demonstration. If I open a new document, and I'm going to insert a drawing. I'll show you how fast I can draw it. I would have a full sheet of paper. I'm going to use the entire sheet because it provides white space, making the notes easier to read and neater. And with only four lines, I have a graphic organizer that encourages me to have acknowledge the prompt, build a thesis, cite evidence, and analyze it, cite evidence, and end. So very quickly, I can make a drawing of this graphic organizer. The second thing that I love about this graphic organizer is that it has um, pre-reading, during reading, and after reading tasks. A pre-reading task here at number two is what we're going to zoom in to next. Keystone responses are going to ask the students to analyze. They'll usually give the students uh, a main idea, um, a theme, uh, a central topic, and then they'll ask students to analyze that topic in the passage, finding evidence from throughout the passage. The first step of this graphic organizer, the second part of this presentation, is the pre-reading step where you acknowledge the prompt. Students would read the prompt, turn the prompt into a statement, write that statement right here as a tentative thesis, maybe looking at personification and tone, for example. They would use that pre-reading step to guide the reading. The purpose of the reading would be to find evidence or examples of, of, their, uh, of their tentative claim which comes from the prompt, which comes from acknowledging the prompt. So I love this graphic organizer because it sets up pre-reading, during reading, and after reading activities using students' time wisely. I want to talk next about during reading activities. While students are reading, they'll be looking for examples of the tentative claim that they made from the prompt. They'll have a graphic organizer to record these examples while they're reading. This makes the graphic organizer very useful because it's used during reading. 
Students will be reading with a pencil in hand. They'll be reading with active reading skills. They'll be reading looking for evidence of the prompt. After reading, students will begin to analyze the evidence. The first active after reading task will be to put the evidence into their own words. This sentence starter is great for helping students to break down the propositions within the sentence that they've quoted or the phrase that they've quoted or the clause or the words that they've chosen from the text. Putting these in their own words helps them to see uh, the different elements in the quote that match the prompt. They'll do this for each of the two examples that they found. The other after reading task is thinking about and constructing their own opinions. I think is struck through because uh, using the word I in academic language is less common, uncommon. Most academic writing encourages students to write in the third person. One argument for that is that third person statements are stronger than first person statements, more objective, more convincing. So it's struck through with a little uh, asterisk and a footnote explaining why here at the bottom. So after they've done the reading task, they'll have two after reading tasks. Analyzing the evidence by putting it in other words, breaking down the components and the propositions within the quote, and writing their thoughts or their opinions about how the quote relates to their tentative claim. Uh, all right, so last part is the end. Well, the last last part is the, um, I'm not sure if it's a claim or a thesis. Uh, the taxonomy, I'm not sure on um, for a constructed response. But the last last part is to make the thesis. So students would uh, summarize their main argument, which would come from their example analysis and opinion, example, analysis, and opinion. They'd summarize those here. And that gives them uh, three chances to revise their thoughts. They would have uh, had a draft here where they have their initial opinion, the draft here. They would have uh, a second draft here, and then they would have their third draft. And so that their um, thesis claim is, is um, has been revised three times that promises to make a, a more clear and um, convincing argument uh, that they lay out in the beginning. So um, in a surprise move, instead of asking them to acknowledge the prompt and then make a thesis, I have them acknowledge the prompt and then read, making their thesis at the end.